Adam, can you tell us a little bit about Seed? I started Seed about uh, seven years ago now um, uh, with a mission um, of really trying to contemporize, modernize how we engage with science and draw new connections between science and society. And we, we first endeavored to do that using journalism and by creating a magazine that um, would tell a different story of how science connects to society and how science influences policy and business, um, the way we think about energy and cities and essentially life. Um, and uh, over the last few years, we've uh, started to take the way of thinking um, that we've been advancing through the magazine, so a sort of scientific thinking, we call it, um, and start developing technology and services to help companies and governments think scientifically. Are there any examples that come to mind that are springing out of India? The UID program is, is an example of scientific thinking. It's the application of uh, the collection of data and ultimately developing a foundational data platform for the country um, upon which you can start to uh, think differently about demographic changes, about migration, about uh, uh, income inequality, um, being able to understand the, the movement of capital across the country, understand access to capital. Um, so I think it, it's ultimately devising a, a grand social experiment ultimately in allowing you to uh, have a, a data-driven foundation to, to make policy decisions uh, and to understand with empirical evidence the impacts of, of you know, policy. So design is a very big part of what you do and how do you link design with science and society? And design as a way of thinking, as a way of working and problem solving within a set of constraints and being very creative within that set of constraints. Um, can really transform the way we apply science, the way we use science in society. So one very important example, I think, is the connection between data and the tremendous amount of data that we're now producing in the world, um, uh, whether it's through the form of electronic health records or mobile data. So design, in this case, is serving as a very powerful tool to create an interface to that complexity. And, and data visualization is a very exciting domain that has been rising um, significantly over the last couple of years opens up a whole range of tools um, to reduce the cognitive load and surface new insights so that we can better understand the relationship between disease. We can better understand how information spreads in a society. We can better understand how people move around in cities. All types of problems that not only can we now see new things because of design, we can actually know new things. We can tackle new problems and surface new knowledge. You were talking about satellite imagery and Facebook. Can you give me that example? NASA has, has uh, advanced the idea that we could look at illumination patterns in a particular region of the world, taken from satellite imagery, um, to be able to uh, sort of anticipate um, the follow-on development indicator, sort of as a proxy for development. Um, so what's been interesting lately is because we now have the, the robust networks that have been created on Facebook and you know uh, the hundreds of millions of friendships, there's some interesting projects to even overlay the data visualizations of you know, Facebook friendships around the world and where there's sort of density of Facebook um, with where we see illumination and where we don't see illumination but we see Facebook, where we see Facebook we don't see illumination. So how can we start kind of mashing up these, these new maps? Essentially this is about creating new maps of, of the world where we're stepping outside these maps, we're stepping outside of the systems that we're a part of and getting a whole new perspective on the systems that we're a part of.